Welcome back. What's up, JC? We're gonna change up the beat this this last Friday. We're gonna talk a little bit about my time in the Mexican prison and why and how I had to put in work over there to pretty much gain the respect of the other inmates there so they wouldn't mess with me. So yeah. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling. Six time failing, I went back to prison. Got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to get back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them. From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision. From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong. From wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong Hey, what's up? JC with Wrong to Strong If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe Hit the bell so you don't miss no videos And leave a comment, tell me what you think I am Wrong to Strong, and if you are part of my family, welcome back. Subanse la suburban, let's get it. Let's put some gas in it so we don't end up in the wrong neighborhood, right? Hey, what's up, Raza, man? You know, I, I hope everybody's staying safe out there with everything that's going on. Uh, it seems like a, a couple of the, uh, you know, gangs in Chicago have called peace treating with some of the other... Uh, you know, black gangs, uh, I guess not a lot of war was going on with everybody. And it, it just, it got crazy. And you know you know what it is, is that uh, this, this same thing happens in the prison system when you are locked down for a very long time. And then they all of a sudden open up the doors and let everybody out. The same thing happens in prison where everybody just goes crazy and starts... Uh, you know, stabbing, beating up people because this guy owed money. This guy, you know, you know, didn't get uh, deliver the drugs to the dude, and, and it, it happens in prison uh, uh, also. So, you know, I, I think uh, the biggest thing was is that everybody came off of lockdown. Everybody was bored. Everybody was uh, scared, and, and and just a lot going on. So, you know, bad things happen, and hopefully, everything will start to cool down and fix my shirt. Everything will start to cool down and, and, you know, get back to normal. But I wanted to change the pace a little bit and talk a little bit more about my story. Instead of focusing on everything, I guess, uh, bad that's happening out there. I mean, I'm not saying that my story wasn't bad, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But so when I got to Mexico, right, I was... Even though I'm Mexican and I'm born like, and, sh and I'm born from my Mexican parents. So I'm the first, first generation pretty much to be born in the United States. I'm a Chicano. Um, I was looked at as a, a, a traitor. I was looked at as, you know, a Chicano that, well, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Mexican pretty much. So, you know, me getting to the Mexican prison was, uh, was a test of itself because um, they, they, they tend to think that they're a little bit more hardcore over there. You know what I mean? And I don't say that in no disrespectful way or bad way at all. I just say that, you know, it's a very different life over there. You're able to get away with a lot more than you are in the United States. It is what it is. You know, I, I've lived in both sides to know the difference and I've committed crimes on both sides to know the difference so I know that you could get away 
where most 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 stuff in Mexico. And when you don't get away with it, it's because you're not meant to get away with it. Just like when I got caught. You know, it is what it is. But when I got there, I don't know if you guys have heard my story before or, you know, are barely, you know, you're new to my channel or whatever. So when I got caught, they took me to the Cerezo in San Luis Potosí. They took me in. I'll never forget that day. All they did was open these big black doors. Huge. That, that, that prison actually is a museum now. They closed it down. They closed it down and they made it into a museum because it was like a a castle from like the 1800s. So uh, they closed it down. It's a museum. Now, hopefully one day I'll be able to go there and film there. But they opened these big black doors and just shut them behind me. And, you know, I was holding <laughs> I was I was in a all Jordan uh, suit. You know, uh, I had the jersey on the shorts. I have some Jordans on. I had my two bags with all my clothes. And um, I had all uh, American clothes. I mean, I had all name brand stuff. Um, I walk in. I ask the guard, you know, where, where where's my cell or where am I going to go live? And he told me, you know, buscale. Go, go find somewhere to live. It's not like United States where they assign you a cell and they assign you, you know, <laughs> your, your celly and all that stuff. No, it's... it's uh, blanket and pillow and all that stuff. No, it's nothing like that. So, and I had already done time in the United States. I had already done one, two, three bids already in the United States before I even got to Mexico. They were short, short ones, but uh, and I, my my career as a criminal had already started. Um, Later on, I actually wanted to do a video about the first times that I went to jail and why. Um, so I'm standing there with my bags, right? I'm looking around, everybody's staring at me. Everybody knows that I'm an American. I mean, I was in the newspaper the night, the day prior to me getting to the prison. Uh, I start walking in and a group of individuals uh, approach me and... I, I could tell right away who the ringleader was because of uh, how he was talking to me and stuff like that, you know. And at first he tried to uh, approach me as a friend, like, you know, if I needed help, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I just wasn't hearing it, you know. I still had my, my tough boy mentality from Chicago, from the streets and blah, you know, I was a gangster. So uh, he asked me, he's like, what size are those shoes? And I was like... Nine and a half. Why? And he's like, let me let me get them. Let me get them. Let me get those Jordans. Let me get those Jordans. And uh, I reacted right away. You know, I put my bags down and I was like, what do you mean? Let me get those Jordans. And I got in his face. Well, little did I know he was distracting me, so the guy behind me could pretty much, you know. Um, Stabbed me. He actually got me with an ice pick right behind the bottom of my right side of my lung. So it was with an ice pick. So when the ice pick went in, it was so thin and sharp that it went in and closed. So I was actually just bleeding from the inside. But right away, I started feeling the, the, the pain because I couldn't catch my breath. And I kept on trying to breathe, but my... Uh, stomach started to hurt really really bad um i ended up you know collapsing to the floor and uh some guys came up to me and uh started uh walking me to the infirmary to the doctor's office in the back of the uh prison it was in the back of the uh like a walk through the back in the prison and uh the doctor seen me and um you know, they kept on saying nothing was wrong with me, and I was in the bed, and I was in so much pain. I, my stomach was hurting so bad that I, I just, I was like, literally almost wanted to cry because it, it was in a very intense pain. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't catch my breath. It was like small, small breaths, and they kept getting smaller and smaller. Uh, they did a, a x-ray on me, and the doctor came in right away and said that they had to put a, a tube in my lung. So... 
They turned me to the side. I thought they were going to, like, put me to sleep or something and stuff like that. No. <laughs> he put me to the side, and he actually stabbed me with the tube that they put in my lung. Um, so not only did I get stabbed by the inmate, <laughs> I got stabbed by the doctor, too. Uh, they put a tube in my lung and started sucking all the uh, blood out. I guess my lung was about to collapse because it was bleeding in the, uh, in the inside. Well, here I am in the hospital. Luckily, you know, I still had my bags, my clothes. Uh, those, those dudes that walked me to the back uh, pretty much picked up my stuff and uh, were good uh, Samaritans or citizens, however you want to say it. <laughs> you know me, I can't talk. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, sitting in the hospital, um, the uh, people from the unit of the part of Mexico of the family that I was working for. That was fucking long. <laughs> the family that I was working for had people there in that prison. So they came in to see me at the hospital. Uh, started talking to me, telling me where I was going to live, you know, who I was going to live. They put me actually in a cell with another American named Max. Uh, that was one of the main dealers for one of the big guys there in the prison. The guy that brought in all the cocaine and all the, uh, pretty much the, the bigger, the bigger size drugs that then let him, uh, he sold to the smaller dealers in the prison. He was the man, pretty much. He was the man. And, uh, he used to very, very much like Americans. He thought that we were hustlers. He, he liked that, you know, Especially like Max, he would stay out there all day selling. Even on visiting days, he wouldn't even like try to chase girls around or nothing. He would just sell, 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 sell because he uh, was making money to, uh, you know, for his habit, you know. Um, uh, uh, he liked to get high. He liked to use coke. So, you know, he uh, would sell all day for, for himself. Um, but the catch was is that uh, I had to take care of business because pretty much if I didn't, I was going to make them look bad. So I had to put in some work as soon as I got out the hospital. Um, the day came where I got released. Uh, they came and helped me get all my stuff. And, you know, I went into the unit, went into my cell where I was going to live and everything and started setting my stuff up and everything. And... You know, the guy that pretty much was going to show me where I was going to go to uh, take care of business uh, came into the cell and, you know, gave me, a, they're called um, 007s. Uh, they're blades. They're like, they're like this big wood and you open it up and it's like, it's a huge, it, it's what we would call in the United States a bone crusher. It was huge. He gave me the knife. He told me that the dude was in Unit B. Unit B, and, and, you know, once I get more and more into my story, I'll explain a little bit more, but Unit A was for all the new people, and Unit B was where they would send all the unwanted. Uh, a lot of the local gang members were there that were all tatted up on the face and and they would get high like on glue and and tinder and gasoline and and they would uh just live very very di very different nobody actually went into unit b because it was like considered to be like the projects it, it was a bad place to be you didn't want to get caught over there a lot of those dudes were very very unpredictable just because of all the 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 the, the drugs they were on and, and high that um, when they're puffing on that stuff, on the uh, tinder and all that stuff, it kind of like, it, it doesn't, it, you don't register a lot of things. So you're kind of like uh, running around stupid pretty much. And, and then the pills don't help either. So nobody would go to that unit. And so he gave me the, the, the knife and he told me that I had to go take care of business. He was going to walk me over there. Um, he was going to wait for me at the entrance and... I was going to take care of business pretty much to show, you know, to not disrespect, you know, Michoacan, you know, Apasingan and, and Michoacan wrote all as one state in that prison. So even though I wasn't from Michoacan, I had to ride out with them because the family that I worked for was from 
Michoacan, so I it's where I lived and the people that clicked up with me. It was almost like a gang, I guess you could say, but their families. Um, I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I was I was scared. I was nervous. My hands were sweating. Um, I had taken care of business before in the United States, but it's very very different when you take care of business with a handgun. <laughs> you're from far away. You're you're shooting. Yeah, I, I mean it, it's it's just not the same. It's not the same. It, when when you're going to stab somebody it's up personal and close you know the the sensation the 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 uh the the way it it, it has to go down is very very different so i don't know I was, I was i was i was scared i was scared i was nervous i'm not gonna lie i, I was sweating um i wasn't doing good and i knew that i had to do this in order for me to win my spot at the table they say you know with these people and where i was at you know so i went in there i seen him and as i was walking in you know i i seen all his like friends and everybody and everybody was actually what what worked out to my benefit actually is that when i when i walked in and they seen me they actually were surprised to see me almost like scared and 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 uh in disbelief that i would even walk into that unit and and be there at that moment you know what i mean so that it actually helped me in a way because they didn't react they didn't react they didn't know what to do they were just staring at me so i came up behind him and i was so scared to actually like get him like above the waist like you know and it's how he got me in my back and stuff like that i was so scared that i actually just i started stabbing him in his butt cheeks <laughs> i got him like three times in his glute <laughs> and you know if if you're familiar with the uh the body there's a, there's a lot of meat in the glute there's there's you have a lot of muscle right there so it's uh you know i mean yes it hurt him he was screaming, and he did fall, fall to the ground, you know what I mean? Um, I quickly uh, put the knife in my pocket. I had blood in my, on my hands and my shirt, and I started walking out. And when I was, as I was walking out, a guard was walking in. So right there and then, I, I thought I was, like, gone for life. I was like, my life is over. I'm done. You know, I'm caught. But actually, the guard was in on the whole thing situation he actually opened the door for me to come in he told me to get the fuck out you know move fast because they had already called it in so i left you know and went back to my unit and uh cleaned up and everything um i had uh, actually cut myself a little bit in the hand of the way that i was grabbing uh the knife because it closed it closed up on me on on the on the third one and it was it was an experience it was an experience and and you know it, it's 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 what i tell people like i had to survive i had to i had to make it i had to make it in this prison where i didn't know the people i didn't know the country i just it was a different world and I had to survive. It's not that I'm glorifying what I did. It's to, sh to show people is that, that like, sometimes you're, you're dealt a shitty hand, you know, and you have to do what you have to do to survive. And it, it's almost like being dropped off in, in a fucking jungle. And, you know, they just tell you to fend for yourself. You have to do what you have to do. You're going to have to kill to eat. You're going to have to kill to, to dress and not be cold. And, and you're going to have to do all these things to survive. And, you know, um, I'm lucky that I made it out of that prison. I'm very, very lucky because a, a lot more things started happening to me as I was there because I, I, I fell into a very bad drug addiction. I started making a lot of enemies. Um, I... I got to the point where I just didn't care no more. You know, my addiction had taken over my life and I was just on on the 
just at the edge of the of the mountain just ready to jump off and you know um life life has a way of working out you know the day that the american council came and got me and transferred me to the united states they they saved my life that day they saved my life because when i got transferred to the united states i was actually a size 29 in waist and i was like 110 pounds that's how how skin and bones i was just from my addiction and the way that i was living out there and you know, with time, I'll get in more. I'll get in more into my story and 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 tell you guys more what happened and everything. Because I went from being a big baller and living in, in Unit Eight, you know, with showers, toilets, you know, my own room with carpet and big screen TV and all this stuff, to actually uh, having nothing and living in a room full of, you know, just with a bunch of dudes and and just, it, it was bad. It was bad. I'm not gonna lie. So, you know, um. Like I tell you all the time, man, my my videos are for entertainment and educational purposes. So, you know, maybe I reach to the right person and they don't make the mistakes that I make. And, you know, um, it is what it is, man. And we have a little bit of fun and we have a little bit of laughs and we smile at my my stuff that I did and what I learned about it. And, and that's what it is. Uh, my name is JC. I am Wrong to Strong. Remember, you have one life, but if you live it right, it's all you need, man. It's just one life. So give somebody a hug, stay in your lane, live savage, and don't ever judge nobody because you don't know what that person is going through. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.